All right, so I've got another project that I'm going to start on here, and this is going to be some more stuff that uh, Steve from Miltronics is going to help me uh, as we do some more of our training for the mill. So this is going to be a complete uh, CNC mill project. And what I want to do, I've got this pair of V-blocks. These were uh, mine and my dad's, so they're kind of special to me. And I want to be able to use these, this pair of V-blocks on the Flex CNC right here uh, later on for some larger tubing and shaft work. But what I want to do is go ahead and machine an adapter plate. We've got two plates cut out, and I want to be able to have these V-blocks mounted to these steel adapter plates and be able to just easily set the whole unit right here on the bed rails and it line up, clamp them down, and ready to go. Have both of them in line with each other. So we're getting ready to start on that now. We'll go ahead and set up our V-blocks because what I want to do is drill a hole pattern in the bottom here. We'll have four through holes. We're also going to mill a keyway on the bottom of this as well. When we'll machine these adapter plates, they'll have a key. It'll have a key milled in the top of that to line up the V-block. It's also on the bottom. It'll have two keyways on the bottom there to line up with the two uh, T-slots in the rails there. And then we'll have some more through holes drilled here for these 5-8 studs. We'll be able to use the 5-8 hardware, four of them, to hold the adapter plate down. So we're going to go over to the CNC mill, start our programming using conversational for our V-blocks. And once we get one of those done, we'll go ahead and set up and start programming for our adapter plate. So we've got our first V-block machined and everything turned out right. You can see our four hole pattern that we drilled in there. And then we milled a uh, 5 8 key, uh, 3 16 deep. We're just going to make our key sticking up on our adapter plate an eighth of an inch. So we have a little clearance there. All right. So move on to this guy right here. We'll go ahead and load it up and we'll get a little video of, uh, of this one being cut. All right, guys, we've got our V-block in there. We've uh, probed it to the center. And we've made a couple of uh, adjustments on one of our tools, our cutting speed. So whenever you see the drill uh, working, that's actually a new cutter. That's a Tungaloy. Uh, it's one of their Drillmeister tools, 13 millimeter. It's an indexable uh, carbide drill. So I made an adjustment on the speed and feed for that. Hopefully that's going to be good. And we are we're ready to send it.
that one's finished up now. It worked out really, really good. The, the finish inside the holes uh, from the, well, it's back there now, but the, the finish inside the 13 millimeter holes look beautiful. And our, uh, our chamfers look really good. This is cast iron, but man, it's, it's machining really nice with those uh, tools there. So both our V-blocks are now finished up. So we've got both of our uh, V-blocks now machined with our hole pattern and our, our keyway. I just mic'd everything out and I was gonna show you. So here's like a standard half inch stud that you can see it fits those 13 millimeter holes nicely. And to measure the keyway slot, I use my steric adjustable parallel there, stick it in, tighten it up, get it nice and snug, and just grab a micrometer and mic it on there. And I just did that. We are spot on 0.625. So that finished out nicely right there. So both our V-blocks are now done. We're going to move on from here and start working on the adapter plate that this V-block is going to bolt to. But I just wanted to um, share with you guys how nice it's been to be able to come over here to the Miltronics and using our conversational programming here on the machine to be able to do quick, simple operations like that. Not, not necessarily that this is a super fast thing to do, but when you've just got a part like this that you want to machine, it is really nice being able to come over to the program here and set it up on this and be able to run a part or run two parts or just a handful of parts versus having to go to the CAM software and model and design that and then bring it over here. So I am really enjoying learning how to use the uh, conversational programming over here on the Miltronics. It's been wonderful. So every time Steve is here helping me, I'm always picking up new things and he's trying to show me um, more features in here in the software uh, that I can use to my advantage to make things uh, simpler and faster. There's a lot of little hidden things in there that, that work really well to make your programming go uh, faster and smoother and easier there as well. So just wanted to share that. So we're gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna pull this guy out and then we're gonna set the vise up differently and we're going to start working on our adapter plates. I'll show you guys again. We've got these two adapter plates. So I think we're going to be able to maybe get one of these done today. It's starting to get late in the day, but we'll see how it goes and see if we can get one of them done. But um, I'm definitely going to share with you guys the machining of these adapter plates once we get them, uh, once we get them going. We'll use our Renishaw probe to uh, find the center of the workpiece here. It was just the two that I was machining, so I wasn't concerned about setting up a stop or anything to locate the second part. First thing we'll do is find our Z. In this case, we're gonna find Z negative 20 so that we can clean this up. Single surface, Z axis, G54 walk, uh, work offset, distance to part. We're just gonna put uh, 
negative 0.3. We want our Z position to be negative 20 thousandths. We're ready to go. Slow it, wrap it down a little bit. Hit run, cycle start. All right, now we know our Z position current. So 256 above the part, so that looks right. Now that we found our Z negative 20 or Z zero of our workpiece, we want to find X zero and Y zero. So we'll go back into our probe cycle. We're going to do web X axis. The width of the plate is uh, 13 and a quarter. G54, X position zero, because we want the middle of the plate to be zero. And we should be good to go. We're about three in, or 0.3 inches above the plate. Run, cycle start. Verify the top of the plate. Got our rapids turned down to 50%. All right, so that's X zero. So let's repeat that, the model of our movements. Go back to probe, web. We want Y axis, and then our width is gonna be 10 and a quarter for this. Y position, we want that to be zero, and we should be right on our, on our pro position. Run, cycle start. Right, we should be the middle of the plate, should be located. Bring it up nice and gentle. All right, now we'll take our, I like to verify, make sure that it is off since we finished the program. We don't have any green lights on there and we have no blinking lights on the uh, Renishaw. So we can take that out and start our program. <laughs> So one of the things that, that I like doing, especially on this job right here, is uh, I need to, once I get the tool in there, I'm gonna be running flood cool on everything, so I've got an optional stop. So once it does the tool change, I can stop the spindle and come in here and actually uh, reset my coolant nozzles so that it's uh, sprayed on the cutter properly. So that's what I'm gonna do here, get it going, and then we'll start cutting the, uh, cutting the plate.
So now we're we're at our uh, one inch tongue force rack mill. I know it's hard to see this stuff with our uh, flood coolant running. But that left a, a really nice finish there using our Walter 45 degree face mill. So I have not proven this side yet with our one inch mill there. So uh, hopefully everything's going to work out good and, and uh, we got a good part here, but not a big deal. I'm not too worried about this, you know, this being a project plate. If, if something was to mess up, uh, I had Joe burn these plates out for me. So if I have to mess one up, he can burn me out some more plates and we can redo it. So we'll go ahead and uh, run our, run our next operation. And the coolant is what it is. I don't know if you're going to get a good shot of it or not, but we're going to put the camera in there and and see if you guys can see this because I really love watching this insert mill work whenever it's cutting. It just sounds good and it leaves a great finish. See how our finish turned out. I think it looks good. It's an interesting tool pattern there. The um, the programming itself, the computer, is what figures out this tool pattern. It's uh, part of their one of their uh, programs in here is called Chip Boss. You plug in your figures and it and it does it for you there. Finish looks good, nice and smooth. So we've got a quarter inch carbide end mill that we're using to finish out the width of the keyway. All right, now that we got it milled, we got our key milled in there, we're gonna go ahead and uh, move on to all the rest of the uh, the ops there. So we've got this uh, spot drill that I actually used for chamfering as well. It'll spot drill it, we're gonna drill it, tap it, and then we'll come back and it'll chamfer everything at the end.
So we have our first op finished up there. Everything looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, V block and go ahead and test fit it on our key, make sure that it's uh, fitting, but I feel good that it's going to drop on there just like it should. There we go. Fits just like it was made for it. Looks like our hole's lining up good too. You literally cannot feel any movement in that key. I'm happy with it. Looking good. All right, get this thing out of the way. And we will set everything up, flip it over, start on the other side. I was gonna mention that what we decided to do is put this, uh, this hole in the center here. That's what we drilled it and used the end mill just to clean it up nice and round and chamfer it. This is a locating hole, that's all it's used for. So that when I flip this guy over, I could easily just locate it off the center of the workpiece. But also, a future reference, if we need to put this back in the machine to line up on it again, for whatever reason, we have a locating hole in the center of that. Uh, that was something that, I've done this before in the past, but I wasn't even thinking about that for this part because, you know, we still got a machine that's flame cut edge. And so uh, Steve had, had mentioned that. He goes, let's just put a locating hole right in the center of the plate that we can uh, indicate off of. So that's what that's there for. So we'll use our probe in the hole here. Once we get it centered up and it'll go down, we'll put it in there and it'll go to, I believe it's every 90 degrees. Just gotta get it down past the surface like that. I think we are ready to probe. All right, so we've, we've successfully centered up on our locating hole there in the middle. So we're gonna go ahead and load up uh, the second operation and go ahead and get this guy finished out. So we wanna, we wanna make sure that we load our program. I'm showing you guys this as a, as a way of sharing with you what it is that I'm learning and I'm trying to remember. I'm not trying to teach you guys uh, this program software up here, okay? I'm just trying to share with you what I'm doing. I wanna go to, um, Program, actually, see I'm already messing up. I wanna to go to Run Program, Menu. This is where we want to select our program. I've learned to always look right here to make sure that we're, the program that we wanna run is, is being shown right here. So Op 2, so we wanna load Op, I'm sorry, this is Op 1. We wanna load Op 2. We'll select that. And now V-Block Adapter Op 2 is ready to go. So we can go to, now we can go to Run Program. And once we hit Start and Cycle Start, that'll start the program. I was gonna show you this as well. If we want to go into the program and modify something, which we've done many times, I was gonna show you this, so exit out of that. Go to Program. And you can hit Last if you've already had it pulled up, but it'll pull up. Op one, so we don't want that. So we go to conversational edits. We go to op number two, select it. All right, there's our program. It's got 46 events in there. And what you can do is just toggle through each event. And if you need to modify it, it's pretty easy. So for example, this is our tool change to do the, uh, the very first milling op, which is gonna be the frame, the perimeter there. Event number one, tool chain. So if we wanted to modify this, 
Say we wanted to change that spindle speed. We got it set at 1450. You go to edit, spindle speed. Let's just go, we'll go 1452. Store it, you gotta, gotta always remember to store it. Bam, and it just changed. So it's really simple to come in here and make modifications to your uh, program if you, if you need to change uh, feeds and speeds, if you need to change depths, anything in the program, you can easily come in here and change that in the, uh, in the uh, program setting, all right? So now let's go ahead and run our part. I was just sharing that little modification with you here and I realized that I missed a step in setting this up. I wonder if anybody caught what I did. So I was showing you how you can edit the program. What I always like to do though, is to uh, hit preview right here and you can watch it go through a simulated cut and see all the operations. This is how we constantly prove it out. Um, I realized that I did not touch off Z. So I'm not sure where it's set. Right now it's set on the full one inch thick where we touched off on the other side. But since we decked that off, Z is gonna be in a different location since we're setting on that machine face. So I didn't think about that when I first put it in there. So I need to put the probe back in there and come and do a single surface Z. And I'm gonna set this one to zero. The other side we set at negative 20 because I wanted to deck that off. There's no need to deck this side off. Just try to keep the plate as thick as we can. So we'll touch it off and, and locate this surface as our Z0.
I think possibly I might be seeing some, uh, you know, some breakdown or degradation of the uh, inserts on the one inch mill. It still feels really nice. It's going to be on size, I'm sure. But I think we're, we're just, we're, we've done quite a bit of cutting with that one inch now. I'm just wondering if the corner radius is starting to get a little wear on it. So I bumped up the, uh, the feed rate this time on uh, that one inch. We had it. We had it set at 111. I bumped it up to 125 inch a minute, and I could tell that it was it was putting a pretty good load on that on that guy. But I love seeing that little cutter rip. I'll get in here and measure our keys to make sure they're uh, where we want them. But other than that, I think this this guy is going to be done here. All right, so here's the one that we just cut. Let's give it a test fit and see if it fits right. Like it was made for it. This is turning out to be a really nice little project that we've been working on here. Here we go. Very nice. I'll go ahead and get the uh, the first one set up here next to it so we can kind of see them both side by side. And I'd like to see what it's going to do. I've got some I got some new uh, flange nuts and washers from Tico and they're the spherical type. I believe they're, they're good for compensating up to 10 degrees angle. So the bottom of the, the flange and the washer just have a sort of like a sphere machined on them because the inside of this is cast. So it's a little bit of an angle. So I think those are gonna work out really good for this right here. This is the first one that we cut. You can kind of notice the difference between the finish between the two there fits in those slots really good. So I gave the keys on the bottom of the plate 1,000th clearance overall in the, in the slot right there. And man, that let them just, 
drop right in without being too tight and not having to necessarily bump it down. There we go. Nice. Besides getting them bolted down, I think these guys are going to be ready for some, for some shaft work. But these are the washers and the uh, flange nuts that I was talking about. So this is going to be the, now this is for half inch, by the way, half 13. That should be the part number 42743, just in case it's something that you might be interested in. I ordered them uh, from Tico. So one side is flat. The other side has a, sort of a radius machined in there. Go ahead and drop one down on both of these because I, I have not tightened any of them down yet. So that's the washers and then these are gonna be, so that's the actual nuts right there. 41805 is the Tico part number. And the bottom of the flange, it has that same radius machined on the bottom of it. Perfect. Yeah, that's sweet right there. There's been a lot of jobs where I wish I had those, those uh, flange nuts and washers to do that. So we'll have four of those on each one of them. Of course, this guy right here, we'll have the, um, the T-nuts and the studs and the flange nuts so that we'll have four, you know, holding on each corner right there. But that is it, real happy with that. It's gonna be some good accessories to use on the flex machine here for uh, large shaft work and uh, uh, pipe tubing, any, any kind of round work like that we can use these for. And just while we're on it, while I got this one here showing you, I, I showed this before when we talked about this, these are some bigger V blocks that James Kilroy gave me years ago whenever I bought that KNC mill from him. And I'm planning on doing the same thing with these guys that I did here. So I'm gonna have some uh, plate cut and we'll do the same thing. Machine it just like that one, except it's gonna be machined to fit this. But we'll set this up and do the same thing that we did to those other V blocks. I'll mill a, a keyway through there so that everything will line up good. And we'll, we'll have it where these guys will bolt in there too, because that's obviously going to handle much larger diameters. And then we'll have to uh, make some clamp bars uh, for them. I got to get some new clamp bars made for these guys too. So I think this project is uh, just about coming to an end. And it's been a really great exercise for me over here on our Miltronics TRM 3016. It did a did a fantastic job cutting these steel plates here. Well, I think this is going to wrap up this week's training on our Miltronic CNC machines. I want to give Steve another big thanks for coming down here and always being so patient with me and, uh, you know, teaching me and going over these uh, controls over and over again because I just seem to forget a lot of the things that he tells me, and it's going to take a lot of repetition, a lot of practice, a lot of constantly doing it to remember where things are at and remember how to use the programming. Uh, like Steve said, some of these projects like this where you have to go in and you're making modifications to your tools, to your, to your cut depths and uh, finishes and second cuts, all those kind of things really do add up. The more that you do it, the more you start remembering how to use the controllers and where to go, where to navigate and find what it is that you're trying to do. And you're going through the programs and you're seeing what you put in there and what you can change and, and trying to remember, why did we do this? Oh yeah, this is why we did this. And it, it's just a lot of repetition, you know? And um, Steve's always so patient with me and, uh, and, and is always there to help me whenever I, uh, you know, I'm stumped or I can't remember because I try, when we're in their programming, I try to remember what it is that he's taught me, and then uh, and then I'll stop and I'm like, I'm sorry, man, I can't remember what. It, and he's like, No, it's okay. It's all part of the learning process. So uh, he's always been very patient. So I really I really appreciate that uh, from him. So uh, the V blocks over there on the flex, I think those uh, turned out really good. I, I really like the I like the finishes on that. And uh, I think they're going to be a good precision parts for us to use for some uh, shaft and tube work. And I'm looking forward to uh, putting those to work. And um, I want to get some, 
some larger shafts, machined in the American pacemaker, and then come over here to the, uh, the flex and use that for some more training and uh, practice on setting up a large uh, gearbox shaft or any kind of large shaft for that matter in the flex to do some, um, some big keyway cutting. But I have really been enjoying running our Miltronics uh, CNC machines. I think they are, they're excellent machines. Everything that I've done, man, whenever, there's a, there's a big sense of satisfaction whenever you, you hit cycle start and you go and you see those cutters making those cuts after you've done all that programming. Man, I had a lot of fun, especially with that, um, with that one inch insert mill. I had that on the second plate, I set it to 125 inches a minute, so it was moving even faster than the first time. And when you see that cutter going around that steel plate making that cut, and the, uh, the, the sounds that it's putting off, and you see the chips spraying over at the window, it's just, it is exciting, it is a lot of fun to finally see that progress happening and, um, and, and see it making a part there. So a lot of fun, I really have enjoyed it. So we just gotta keep doing it. We gotta keep working at these guys and practicing and training and uh, trying to get a little bit better and, and better understanding. And, and that's what it's gonna take is repetition every day. That's why all you guys that run CNC machines, I have a lot of respect for you because I know y'all can come over here and um, whether you're doing CAD and CAM at your computer and coming out here or using this, the CNC guys that do this stuff every day, you know your stuff. I see it in videos, I see it in posts, and uh, hopefully one day I will, I will be somewhere close to that where I can make some beautiful parts on our CNC machines and uh, share it with you or share it with our customers, should I say. So that's gonna wrap it up. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'm gonna be sure to uh, get the camera whenever we have some more projects and practice sessions over here on our Miltronic CNC machines. I have another pair of adapter plates that I want to machine for those larger V blocks over there. So that'll be another fun project that's gonna come along too. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you again on the next video.